You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. All right. Hey, welcome to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to go and continue on with our little short series of the seven principles of prosperity. And we're going to talk about control. So the fifth principle of prosperity is to control your dollars. And so most of us are taught to not be in control. So we're (laughs) we we uh basically are see most people always say this right most people don't get financial education they get financial training and the training basically says give your money to us let us uh control it for 20 or 30 years let us let you put up a hundred percent of the money uh take uh 100 of the risk to maybe get 20, 25% of the profits, if there's any profits at all. So I think I have that quote right. That's not me. That is um, Jack Bogle, founder of Vanguard Mutual Funds, right? So (laughs) the, uh, you know, and so to think that some person who didn't work for the money will be a better steward of your money than you is crazy, Right. And so that you have to be able to bid control. And so typical strategies ask you to turn your money over to big financial institutions who use your money to make more money with no guarantees for you. So that is completely out of out, out of uh, out of the pocket. Right. And so then you put money in qualified plans. So now you put so you put your first money in qualified plans. And so you've already now locked it up. You can't get it out of there without a penalty you know you notice it's not your money because if you roll it over um and let's say you you were doing a rollover to put it in a you, know, you roll it out of a 401k to put it in an ira and and they send i've done this with pensions they send the check to the client it says you know john doe fbo no it says um what does it say it's the name of the company fbo for the benefit of john doe Right. So that is for the benefit. It's not yours. It's for the benefit of. So when you see it, just take. Thirty percent off the top, (laughs) you know, 40 percent off the top. I ask people when you when you look at your qualified plan, did you check the off the 30 percent loss box or the 40 percent loss box? Because when you see all that money, it's not yours. But control. See, you we call it clue control, liquidity, use and equity, because. What can you, here's that word, control about a stock market going up or down? Nothing, right? So that's, first of all, that's not an investment. If you look at uh, Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett's mentor definition of investment, what is that you say, Curtis? It's, it's, It's something you put your money into where your principal is safe and you have a reasonable opportunity to make a profit. And he says, I quote, anything other than that is speculation, i.e. gambling, right? So you think you're saving for retirement, but you're really gambling for retirement. You're speculating for retirement and you don't have control, right? So here are ways to control your wealth. Avoid speculation and trying to time the market. Being an active investor who understands what you're investing in does not delegate your money decisions to others. So you have to lead your wealth. You have to be sometimes you'll loan money, you know, bridge loans. And so there's things where you control and you invest it. And sometimes you want to be passive and you loan it. So you can do that with syndications for, you know, or to life settlements. You know, we've interviewed uh, uh, Kevin Nichols from Penumbra or um, um Jimmy Vreeland, uh, look up those episodes or um, uh, Jim Smalls from Sante Realty, where you're investing in syndications. So now you're, which is a combination of equity and lending, but you know, that way, if you don't want to go out there and do the work and drive houses and do all the fix up, sometimes you focus on your unique ability, your business, which is something you can control 
and you will loan your money for a, a, a rate of return, but still in an active investment where you've got, you know, protection, where you understand where it's going. So when you're using bridge loans, you know, you've got a, a promissory note and you've got equity. And if they default, you get the house. I mean, so you want to, you know, learn how to um, put your money in places where you have protection from the from uh, downside risks, right? And so you want to be an active investor for the most part, and you have to lead your wealth. You know, you want to limit your qualified plans contributions to the match, M-A-T-C-H. Um, you know, so if you're putting in 8% and they only match you to four, guess what, sports fans? You need to only put in four because most people don't. If you go to my... Uh, the link on our page for the intro to the practical wealth process, we have an illustration of something we call the personal economic model. So in the model, we talk about your yellow tank and your green tank. So the yellow tank is the investment tank and the green tank is the, is the savings tank. And so what most people do is they put money right into the yellow tank, right from payroll, right? So you're set, you're investing from income and we teach you need to save from income and then from your income, from your savings, from your private reserve, from your cash accumulation, you pick investments that you've researched, that you understand, and you deploy your capital into that in something that will bring you back cash flow, right? Um, you know, if you've got to use a qualified plan, I would use a Roth rather than a traditional IRA or 401k. Um, I would not reinvest the dividends, Ashley. Right, and you know, in taxable investments, I would invest. The, you, I would get my dividends out, and I would put them somewhere else. Okay, um, you know, we teach utilizing where you want to control the perfect place to store cash is utilizing um, cash flow banking, or we call it the private reserve. Is basically use utilizing high cash value whole life insurance when appropriate to build liquidity, growth, and protection of your long-term savings. But as uh, my friend Caleb calls it, it's the and asset you can have. I explained this to somebody the other day. It's not either or. It's not this or real estate or this or, God help you, Bitcoin. Just just kidding. I'm actually going to do an interview with somebody on cryptos. So we're going to talk about that. So he's going to school me on that. And... Um, but even if you want to speculate, options, you know, trading, you, I would borrow against my permanent insurance, move that money into a brokerage account and trade from that. And so, so now at least my principal is safe because that my underlying money is still in safe and sound in my policy. And then I am uh, trading with house money. And then when I get the profits up, I'll take pay back my loan against the policy and boom, I pocket my profits. I might take the profits and buy gold, right? But you want to keep money going back to what's principle six, which we're not going to talk about today, which is move. But you need to have control of your assets. And so investing assets with predictable, even guarantee returns, surprisingly, predictable returns do not equal low returns, uh, especially for investors, you know, investments available to accredited investors. You can get stuff that are fixed and get double digit returns on fixed stuff. And so, you know, you got to ask yourself, how can I become an accredited investor, which is another conversation. That's why a lot of times your first best investment is learning how to grow your business so you can get your revenue up so you can be, you can make 200 grand a year or 300 grand a year is a couple uh, or your net worth is, you know, I think we talked about in one of the other podcasts, what's a credit investor. But there are things by law you can't even talk about. Can't even you can't even be talked about too by law because you're not a credit investor. And see, so you know things that you control. Because remember, there's four asset classes: business, real estate, paper assets, and commodities. But when you look at who's on the Forbes 400. It's business owners, people that somewhere started a business, and it's real estate, right? That's kind of how they got there. People say, oh, Buffett made money in the stock market, but he did not. He did, but basically what he does is buy the whole damn company, right? And Or buy enough of the controlling so that he has some say-so. But again, control, 
right? Or, you know, a Berkshire Hathaway, Berkshire Hathaway owns Geico. They own furniture store. They own candy stores. And, um, and they let the people in place that are running the business and they let them do their thing. And all the profits after running the business, paying the salary, flow up to Berkshire Hathaway. And then he's got that cash looking for more opportunities to deploy his capital. But the thing that drives it is the he's he basically put together a partnership. We pulled money. And he's looking at businesses that that, you know, are going to thrive in good times and bad. And that cash flow flows out the Berkshire Hathaway and they look for ways to, again, create velocity and keep that money flowing. So, you know, once you get that process, what we've got to learn how to do is to on our small level. That still works. See, all these strategies work in personal finance for regular people. You just got the zeros are are less. But, you know, because we're talking about like prosperity economics is based on principles. It has nothing to do with markets and products. And, you know, you need products to do certain things. But it's really about it's never the product. It's always the strategy. And then once you figure out where you want to go, then you find the product that help you get from point A to point B, but products have no assurance of success. And see, so when people lead with products with you, people say, what should I do? What should I invest in? What I don't know. I don't know you. What's your, you know, so that's good. You just say, you ask me, what should I do? That's going to generate like five other questions back to you, just in case you know when you call me, because it's, it's A, it's your money, right? And so what are your time frames? What are your goals? You know, what, how's your liquidity? You know, there's a lot of other factors there. So, you know, that's where you've got to lead your wealth. You know, one of the things that we always talk about is that I feel my job is to, uh, to borrow a strategic coach term, raise your ceiling of complexity. And because you only know, but so much. So what happens is you're frustrated and you're scared because you're at your ceiling of what you know. And so what we have to do is, and I feel what we try to do with the show is to get you to read stuff, watch stuff, bring on experts, listen to me drone on about stuff from time to time. And, um, you know, but what I want to do is raise your ceiling of complexity. So your as your knowledge goes up, your anxiety comes down because with with more knowledge, that opens up more choices to you mentally. So where you're frustrated because you just don't know what to do. But if you'll read 12 pages a day, you know, I.E. Slide Edge from Jeff Olson. Um, shout out, Jeff. And um, we hung out one time when I was in uh, prepaid legal and we could, he could put away some beer. <laughs> we hung out in Cancun also. So he's a really cool guy and uh, brilliant guy, too. And uh uh, and he's a great book called The Slight Edge, uh, just so you know. So put that one on your reading list also. Um, but the, um, you know, you want to work on, I was speaking to this, yeah, this youth group, not youth group. They're uh, like, uh, I'm doing this financial literacy class for these, uh, again, uh, for these ex-offenders. And I always start out with, you know, most people don't have a money problem. They have a philosophy problem. Right. Because there's only four things you can do with a dollar. You can spend it, save it, invest it or give it away. And so I said, well, you get some money. What's the first thing you do to spend? It? I got to buy this. I got to buy that. That's a philosophy. And so if you have that philosophy, you're going to be broke because you're a spendthrift. And so you need to uh, think, save, invest first. You know, when the money hits your account, spend after you paid yourself first because you got to save it before you can invest it. Right. You need to give some away and uh, you still want to spend it and live your life. But it's just the order in which you do that. So that forms your philosophy. So with that. So uh, what we want to talk about today. Right. Was principle number five control. So stay tuned for next week. We've got two more left in the series. We've got uh, what's the next one move and we have multiply. And then that will conclude our our series. So if you'd like to see what I'm talking about and really go understand a little bit more about prosperity economics and and what we call traditional versus typical, which is all the financial entertainers and what you see from probably people you work with now, we call that typical advice, where it's based on 
Monte Carlo and uh, asset allocation and you know, buy term investor difference, all that's typical about universal life. That's typical advice. And what we at the Prosper Economics Movement, we're traditional. You know, we're talking about what people did before mutual funds became all the rage. You know, what do people do? You know, money's thousands of years old. So if you, you know, there were principles that came before uh, stocks, you know, insurance, whole life insurance predates the founding of our country. <laughs> You know, and it's definitely 100, 150 years older than the tax code, right? So where do you want, I tell people, look, where do you want to store your cash? You want to store it in a joint account with the treasury or <laughs> call it a qualified plan or in a free contract with free people in an entity that predates the IRS by over 100 years called permanent dividend paying whole life insurance with a mutual company, just to be very specific. So Hey, short, sweet episode today. You guys have a great day. Uh, please leave, if you like what we talk about, leave me a comment. Please share. Um, you can email me at kurtmay at gmail.com with uh, show ideas. Um, you know, uh, like our, I'm going to create a podcast page. Right now, our, our business page is the uh, Practical Wealth Advisors uh, business page. And, you know, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of the podcasts go right to YouTube. We're trying to make sure we put up a couple of videos because sometimes, and I'm gonna start see if I can simulcast. So once I can figure out how to <laughs> make uh, Zoom work with Facebook Live, I'm gonna try simulcasting them at the same time because sometimes I want to do a screen share and um, I want to be able to show some stuff. So we, you know, we try to put up at least one or two videos a week. So check it out. You know, we're all about education up here. So have a great day. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.